are. So we're going to begin by talking about combining and subdividing. And I put this picture of salad here because when I take all of my individual ingredients, as you can see here, we have strawberries and it looks like maybe pineapple and blueberries and we have the lettuce and we bring those all together. That's when we are actually combining something. Okay. And then whenever we say that you get a salad and there's one thing in there that you really don't like, then that's when you take it apart or take it out and that's when we're subdividing. So let's look at these two basic figures right now and do a little bit of that um, right on the screen. So the first figure that we have is a trapezoid. It's a trapezoid because it has two sides that are parallel to one another. This side and this side are both parallel. So if I go ahead and subdivide this figure or kind of break it apart into pieces, you know, take out that ingredient that you are really not a fan of, I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this figure right along this dotted line here, okay? Now, when I subdivide this figure, my big question to you guys is, what figures do I now have after I've subdivided? So try to, in your mind, imagine the two figures that have been created, and I'm actually going to draw them right here, just kind of freehand. So we have the one, which would kind of be this one, okay? And then the other one up here, looks a little something like this. So they're both triangles, right? This one, and I kind of drew it poorly right here, this triangle that I'm pointing to right now would be considered an obtuse triangle right here. And this triangle here, you know, I could kind of flip it over to see, but it is definitely an acute triangle, probably isosceles, okay? That's by simply going ahead and dividing that along that dotted line. You kind of have to be able to picture in your mind what it would look like. Now let's try one more really quickly, guys. If I would happen to divide this rectangle here, I could divide it into a couple of things. Number one, I could split it down the middle and I would have myself a, two squares, okay? Then I could split a square into two parts and get myself two separate right triangles. Here I have a right triangle and here I have a right triangle. So combining and subdividing. Now let me move you on to another practice page really quickly. This one right here, this picture kind of gives you a good indication as to what happens whenever we bring figures together. So what I want you to think of right now is, you see this dotted line here, guys? Pretend that I bring these two squares together. And I know they're squares based on the side lengths that are presented. It says four centimeters, four centimeters, four centimeters, four centimeters. I know that a square has four congruent sides. So if I bring these together right along this line, and if I imagine that in my head, this is kind of what it would look like, I get myself a rectangle. And obviously I split those, like it showed there, and I got myself two squares. So those were both of the different examples I had for subdividing. Okay guys, this is one of those such examples that I want you to look at and figure out which of these four figures could com be combined, okay, we're working on combining right now, to create to create a square. You remember a square needs a four congruent sides, it needs a four right angles, two sets of parallel sides, and obviously being a closed figure with four sides. This is good practice because you kind of have to imagine these in your head. So would I be able to combine figure one together to create a square? Or think about figure two, would this create a square? Figure three, okay, or figure four? Think about it for a second. Yeah, it's definitely figure four, and let me show you how. So here we have, right in this area, we have this right triangle. If I were to take this right triangle and slide it over and put it right here, I would get myself a perfect square. Two right triangles combined equals a square in that case. Now, here's a pretty familiar picture. This is actually the Pentagon, okay? Some of your parents or family members may do business there or work there, okay? Obviously a pentagon is a five-sided figure, so it's not a quadrilateral, but I thought it was kind of cool because it can be subdivided into a ton of different figures. Let me show you one example. Say that I subdivide this figure along this line, okay? So if I take this figure like this, this shape right here would be an isosceles triangle, okay? This side and this side are equal in length, and this side is a different length. And it's also acute because all of 
or I may actually be obtuse, guys, because this angle and this angle are acute. But if you look at this angle right here, I believe that this will measure more than 90 degrees. So this would be an obtuse angle. Now, then I look at this figure that I subdivided, and this figure right here would be a trapezoid, because this side and this side are parallel to one another. This figure, guys, could be divided in more than just that way. You know, another such case where I think you could subdivide this could be right here. Or you could do it in multiple ways. You could also divide it here. So here, in this case, when I subdivide this figure, I get a triangle here. I get a triangle here. And I get a triangle here. Okay? So once again, that term subdividing is like taking the ingredients out of your salad. Okay, guys, in the final quadrilateral that I have for you this evening, I would like you first to think about what type of quadrilateral is this based on the characteristics and properties that you see. Yes, it's definitely a parallelogram because this side and this side are parallel to one another, and these two opposite sides are also parallel to one another. It's not a rectangle because it does not have four right angles, and it's not a square because it doesn't have four congruent sides. So really for this one, all I want you guys to kind of look at is how can I divide or subdivide this into different figures to also find other quadrilaterals or triangles in that matter. So a couple of different ways I was thinking, number one, I could divide it like this, okay, and then I would have two separate triangles. I have a triangle that is located right here. Okay, and I have a triangle that's located right here, and these triangles are definitely obtuse because this angle right here is obtuse in this triangle, and this angle right here is obtuse in this triangle. And you know, like we talk about, guys, you kind of have to, when you split this figure, you kind of in your mind have to say, okay, I'm going to watch as they both move apart. You kind of have to say in your mind, okay, I'm watching as they move apart. So when they move apart, here are the figures that I have. Okay? That wraps up our combining and subdividing review for the day.